Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to this edition of Tim's Awesome Projects. Today, I'm going to show you how I built this slide out that includes an incredibly spacious bathroom. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you how you can add this to your custom build. So let's go over what we are doing with this bath slide out. When the bath slide is out, we are effectively doubling the area in the bathroom to around 20 square feet which is a lot for a Class B van. When the slide is in, the shower tub tucks under the vanity. However, the toilet is still fully usable. So here is an overview of what we will need to do to make this slide out. We will need to add two permanent partition walls. These will face the inside of the bathroom when the slide is slid out. Next, I will add two 500 pound 24 inch door slides near the floor on the inside of each of the partition walls. A platform floor will be built above the finished floor and will extend into the aisleway and slightly underneath the toe kick of the galley. It will have two walls attached to it that will be exterior walls when the slide is slid out. The platform and walls will be attached to the exterior wall of the van. The next step will be to cut out the exterior wall of the van so that it is only attached to the platform and the platform wall. Once the exterior wall is cut out, the platform will be free to slide in and out. One thing to note is that the drawer slides are extended when the platform is in. They are fully retracted when the platform is slid out. An overhead U-beam is added to help support the roof. This is attached to the two fixed partition walls. Two slide out rollers are fixed to the floor of the van to support the weight of the platform and walls near the edge of the van. Two additional casters are fixed to the bottom of the platform that will help support the platform above the finished floor of the van. Taking a look at the inside of the van, the location of the slide out is measured out. I have it highlighted in red in this video. Most of the support structure inside this area will need to be removed. Some of the bridging structures can be removed by cutting two tabs at each end. I used a Dremel with a cutoff wheel for this purpose. I progressively work making cuts using an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. I tend to be a little more aggressive time-wise with the initial cuts and will go back afterwards to clean it up. I want to ensure that I'm left with no more than 3 quarters inch of material protruding from most of the van skin. It is important to leave the triangular shaped structures at the bottom. They are used to fasten to the slide out platform. The holes in them will be drilled out to install riv nuts. A template is created to match the contour of the van. This is used to cut out the wall panels from 3 quarter inch plywood. The panels are dry fitted to ensure they will fit correctly. Riv nuts are installed for mounting the wall. It is important that these are precisely perpendicular to the van wall. Construction adhesive is applied over the riv nuts and on top of the floor ribs. Wall mount strips are then attached with bolts to the floor. Note that the strips are drilled with pocket holes to affix to the wall panel. Prior to installing the walls, FRP is bonded to the inside of the wall panels and then it is fastened to the mounting strips using construction adhesive and pocket screws. I also started laying the subfloor with a half inch poly iso insulation and a half inch floor rated OSB. The fixed wall panels are fastened to short wood strips using construction adhesive and pocket hole screws. The strips are fastened to horizontal van wall structures using bolts and riv nuts. A U-shaped wood beam is attached to both walls and the van roof using bolts and riv nuts. The U-beam is needed to help support the van roof and ties the upper inside section of the walls to the roof as well. The U-beam is a good place for running electrical wiring. It will house an exhaust blower fan for the bathroom. It will also support the pantry unit and the bath counter. The next step is to start working on the platform and the slide out side walls. A rim joist is fastened to the van sidewall using 3 8 inch bolts and rim nuts. 
The rim joist is kept one and a half inch short of the fixed wall. Also, two J13 rollers are positioned and bolted to the floor using 3 8 inch bolts and rib nuts. Custom 3D printed guide rollers are affixed at 8 inches from the top of the fixed wall and 2 inches in from the van wall. 500 pound 24 inch drawer slides are attached at the base of the fixed wall so that they telescope out into the walkway. 5 8 inch plywood is cut to fit using the van wall templates and have FRP bonded on both sides. They are then fastened to the outside platform joist using construction adhesive and stainless steel wood screws. They are then glued and screwed to the rim joist using two and a half inch pocket screws. Three more joists are glued and fastened to the rim joist. The inside rim joist is glued and screwed to the joist which then finishes the framing for the platform. Next, I started attaching furring strips made from 3 quarter inch plywood. They are affixed between horizontal structures of the van wall in two spots near the top. I use construction adhesive and pocket hole screws to attach them. A final furring strip is attached from the top to the bottom. This is done for both walls. I want to note that any bare metal has been painted to prevent rusting. Poly ISO foam insulation board is installed in flat areas between structures using construction adhesive. Combinations of 3 quarter inch and half inch poly ISO are used due to variations in the contour of the van. Loctite brand window and door expanding foam is applied to fill in all gaps around the poly ISO boards. To allow the poly ISO to conform to the curved walls, the board is scored on the back and snapped so that it can bend more easily. A second layer of poly ISO is applied near the top to build out to the thickness of the furring strips. Luon is installed using construction adhesive and is screwed to the furring strips. Before we go any further with the construction, we will need to cut out the van skin. Let's take a look at a detail of what we need to do. This detail represents the exterior van wall where the fixed walls and the slide out wall meet. There are two cuts that need to be made. The one cut is flush with the fixed wall. The other is halfway between the two walls so that there is 3 8 inch of van wall metal extending past the slide out wall. Later, a 3D printed solid molding made of ASA plastic will be adhered to the exterior skin and the fixed wall. Trim lock with a bulb seal will be attached to the metal extruding past the slide out wall. Before we get any further, a step I forgot to mention was I placed some divots in the metal skin before the slide out walls were installed. These are 3 8 inch from the fixed wall using a spring loaded center punch. That way I know exactly where the center cut is to be made from the outside of the van. The center cut lines as well as the flush cut lines can then be marked out on the exterior. Masking tape is placed to protect the surface next to the cutouts. Starting cuts are made using an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. I then make an angled cross cut. Next, I bend the metal tail I created and cut it off. On areas that are fairly flat, I will use an inline pneumatic metal shear. This saves a lot of time where the metal steps out or is irregular, I will have to use the angle grinder with cutoff wheel. This takes a little bit longer. For curves, I will use a pneumatic nibbler tool. This process is repeated to cut up the center line.
After cutting all the way around the slide out, it can now be slid out. This gives us a first look with it open. Three quarter inch plywood decking is added to the back portion of the slide out. This will have openings for the tub drain and is open where the toilet will be set. The low profile RV toilet is raised on a platform. This brings it to the height of a normal toilet. By doing so, this provides room for plumbing underneath. If a macerator marine type head is used, this step up would not be necessary. The roof to the slide out is now installed. It is a composite of FRP on the bottom, 3 quarter inch poly iso foam board in the middle, and polycarbonate clear plastic on the top. FRP is added to the back wall. The section above the tub is left with a lower section not glued to the wall so that the tub rim will tuck behind it. Aluminum angle is installed to the slide out walls and the fixed walls to create a sealing surface for when the slide is slid out. Also the tub is enclosed with FRP that is screwed in place so it can be removed for easy maintenance. 100% waterproof vinyl flooring is added to the platform. Aluminum trim is also installed along with white trim lock to the tub end lip and the FRP. The RV toilet is now installed. The front section of decking with the vinyl flooring and aluminum trim is set in place. This is removable with 10 one and a quarter inch stainless screws so that the mechanical and plumbing underneath can be serviced. Now before any of the plumbing is installed, we need to get the moldings around the slide out openings installed. In order to access where they go, we need to overextend the slide out. This is done by removing all the screws on the slides attached to the platform, except for the two end screws. Next, we move the platform out about eight inches. The two remaining screws are removed and the slide is repositioned all the way out and then the two screws are reinstalled. This is repeated for the other side. Moldings with contours to match the van side are 3D printed in sections using ASA plastic. The moldings are attached with black Sikaflex 291 marine adhesive and stainless steel screws. Since the moldings on the side overlap, installation starts at the bottom, working your way to the top. Moldings at the top and bottom are pinned together using 1.4 millimeter ASA filament and are glued with plastic weld two-part epoxy. The bottom molding is also riveted to an aluminum angle for added strength. Trim lock with a 3 8 inch bulb seal is attached to the slide out sheet metal. Now that the moldings have been installed, we can return the slide out so the slides are back to their original positions. Plumbing for the shower drain and the toilet are now connected. A 12 volt 24 inch actuator is installed to the van floor using through bolts and to the platform frame. The bath cabinets are now being installed, which includes the first section of the pantry. The remaining pantry is installed by suspending it from the ceiling. The bathroom side of the pantry is finished up with a counter, sink, mirror, lighting, and the cabinet below the sink. The faucet for the tub shower is fastened to a short slide unit that basically is like an upside down drawer. Two pegs on the wall keeps the faucet so it is always over the tub. This method has eliminated the complexity of running more plumbing in the slide out itself. The longest original factory lower molding on the van is modified by cutting it in two since the slide out opening falls in the middle of it. 3D printed end pieces are attached to make it look similar to the factory finished ends. So now we have a full roomy bath with shower with tub sides, a real sink and faucet, and lots of storage room. If you would like me to custom build a slide out in your conversion van project, 
go to www.perfectcampers.com, click on Contact Us. In the form, provide your name, email, and some description of what you would like in the comments section, and then click Send. I will get back in touch with you as soon as I can. I will also include a link in the description below. Thanks for watching this video.